Namaste. So here we are after our break, coming back into Lakshmi Tantra and explaining the insights connected with chapters 18 and 19. Now, to get insight, you have to have perspective, foreground and background, content and context. So let's put this chapter into context. First, she explains the whole cosmogony, the origin and construction of the universe. And then she explains four methods of self-realization. And she kind of brushes off the first three. And then she says that self-surrender, prapati, this is the method that you can use. And without going into all the formalities of Vedic sacrifice and analysis of the cosmos and so on. In other words, it's for anybody. Sharanagati. Anyone can surrender. And then what does that surrender? What does that mean, actually? In practical terms, it means chanting mantras. So then she begins to explain the whole Sanskrit alphabet and the origins of language and speech and how this all empowers these special words and sentences called mantras. So now, in 18 and 19, she discusses the evolution of speech in 18 and in 19, the origins of the Sanskrit alphabet. And these will be very important later on when she starts discussing specific mantras because the mantras are given in code. So anyway, the next few chapters will reveal all this. But in these chapters, she talks about, first of all, where does speech come from? And she gives four levels of speech. Well, let's start from the beginning. In the beginning, Indra asks her, O beloved of Vishnu, describe to me the path of mantra leading to the goal of self-realization so that I might worship thy divine mantra form. In other words, there is a path of mantra that leads to self-realization. And here we're not talking about some sectarian realization. We're talking about Brahman realization, which is the prime form of self-realization given in the Vedas and Upanishads, the explained in the Vedanta in great detail. So this is not some little parochial, you know, faith. <laughs> this is the main current of Vedic thought leading to moksha, not just mukti. Uh, mukti comes in five different kinds, and in all five of them, you retain your form. But she's talking about moksha, complete self-realization. So what is that? She says, first of all, the significance of the questions you have put is astounding and unparalleled. Nobody asked these questions before. This is why Lakshmi Tantra is unique among all scriptures. Then she says, I, Shabda Brahman, spiritual sound, am essentially consciousness and bliss, the source of all mantras, the absolute, the mother of all sound, Shakti, not subject to appearance and disappearance. So she is not destroyed at the end of the universe. Huh? She is sound. And it's interesting that recently scientists have postulated that the Big Bang was accompanied by a huge mega sound, huh? which vibrations are still crisscrossing the universe today. 
and that this was responsible for the clumping of ancient matter into galaxies and stars and such. <laughs> Scientists are so clueless. They could have just read it here. <laughs> then she says something very profound. It is universally understood that indication of an object is invariably preceded by use of the sound denoting it. In other words, I call it out and then I indicate it. There's a window, there's a door, there's a light, there's a microphone, there's a camera. See, all of these objects are pointed out, indicated by use of this sound that denotes it. Isn't it? Whenever we talk about something to anybody, we say, we point out this object in relation to that object, and then maybe we put a predicate on it of, you know, some kind of action that has to happen or something like that. But this is language. This is what language is for, and this is how it's made. Now, the speech comes in the progressive manifestation of Nada, Bindu, Madhyama, and Vaikari. In Nada, which is the primary manifestation of sound, it doesn't carry any vachyata or meaning, significance. Then in the next stage, Pashyanti, although it carries implication, it is not yet manifestly polarized. That means there's still no difference between the subject and the object. But in Madhyama, the Sangati, or the meaning, transforms itself into a sanskara, an impression in the mind. And as this energy moves from the lower chakras to the higher chakras, it becomes increasingly polarized and increasingly meaningful. And then finally, in the Vaikari stage, you have syllables, words, and sentences clearly discernible as to their meanings. Then she takes responsibility for all the mantras. In the Parva Yoma, supreme space, I exist as the divine, total and original I-hood, adorned with the garland of eternal aksharas, the sounds and letters of the alphabet spanning all space. I am known as the mother of all mantras, bestowing both prosperity and liberation. All mantras surge up like waves from me, the ocean of consciousness. These forms and masses of sounds, lovely as concentrations of consciousness and bliss, evolve out of me as their substratum and repeatedly flow back into me. So you see, she is this ocean of sound, and sound is directly indicative of consciousness. So because sound expresses consciousness, therefore all mantras come from her, because she is the ocean of consciousness. See, she is fundamentally formless and without distinction and discrimination. She is pure consciousness without an object. But then when the first differentiation between uh, Shiva and Shakti or Narayan and Lakshmi takes place, this original duality forms consciousness with an object. So then, what are the objects of this consciousness? Well, when we become conscious of ordinary objects, it leads to bondage and suffering in the material world. But when we train our consciousness to dwell on the sounds that represent her or other deities, this leads us to liberation, freedom, bliss, Huh? And this is the experience of everyone who actually practices this knowledge and not just think about it as a philosophy or something like that. So how do these sounds develop? O oh, delight of the gods, I have 15 dasha, states of existence, corresponding to the 15 vowels. 
a a i i u u ri 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 a i o ao m the process of cosmic evolution is exactly mirrored in the alphabet akara being the root and all subsequent sounds and letters being projections or transformations of it and each successive sound is the effect of the preceding one so when we look at the origin of the sanskrit letters the vowels all come from a avyakta the primordial state then the vowels a through ao are the developmental states that emerge one out of the other and finally the final vowel mm, the nasal is represents brahman or complete annihilation of the material creation and this is why all the bijas of the powerful mantras like tarika and anutarika which we'll discuss later all of these bijas end with mm huh ang ain om aung kling hring shring they all end with the bija mm so this is because they all merge into brahman and this is why they have the power to grant liberation now then she says the eternal essence of myself as vach speech is akar letter a which is primary and self revealed is consciousness and the root of the entire domain of speech what is the first thing any baby says ah <laughs> all speech begins with ah and when we don't know what to say we go ah <laughs> I'm trying to think of what to say. <laughs> Now, there's something very funny about that. That Bengalis, Bengalis are so into the divine mother that when they can't think of what to say, they say ma ma ma. <laughs> It's really true. So she is the root of all speech. when the same akara develops into the ananda form a it is regarded as the second vowel the third vowel appears as icha e and the fourth as ishana e the fifth is unmesha u while the sixth is said to be urja u the four middle vowels ri ri li li are modifications of e e u and u respectively combination of the first vowel akara a with e produces akara a icha combined with ananda a is called jagadyoni i the combination of akara a with unmesha u indeed produces okara o which when combined with akara produces the sound sadyojata ao thus all these sounds that ultimately relate to objects of knowledge are derived from the first vowel the 13 vowels from ananda to sadyojata are specific elaborations of the first sound a when these 13 developments reach the stage of representing nothing but knowledge itself in other words consciousness their final and most ultimate stage the 15th vowel sound m mm, emerges so this is how the vowels develop see it's not just arbitrary in school when we learned the alphabet nobody ever taught us this stuff in fact even if you study sanskrit in most schools or from most teachers they don't go over this why is that because they don't know the scriptures actually this is only given in lakshmi tantra as far as i know i haven't found this information in any other scripture but it's absolutely necessary to understanding the development of the sanskrit alphabet and consequently the meanings of the letters and when they combine into words how those meanings are generated 
So then let's take a look at the consonants. From me engaged in the function of creating emerged the 25 tattvas, cosmic principles, beginning with Purusha and ending with Prithivi, the earth, as well as the corresponding sounds and letters from Ka to Ma. Each principle emerges from the manifestation of its correlated sounds. The velars, ka, ka, ga, ga, na. The palatals, cha, cha, ja, ja, nya. The cerebrals, ta, ta, da, da, na. The dentals, ta, ta, da, da, na. And the labials, pa, ba, 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 ma. The last four sounds, ya, ra, la, va, are named as the fourfold dharana, deep meditation with the mind fixed on a single object. As these are themselves composed of purusha, they are regarded as dharana. Ka to ma represent the self's material state of differentiated existence. Sha to ha and ksha its unpolarized absolute state, ya to va, its intermediate state, when through meditation it descends from the absolute to the differentiated state. So you see, <laughs> all these letters have a deep meaning connected with the actual nature of the universe and the 25 tattvas or the different types of manifestation all the way from the personality of Godhead, Purusha, or the soul, in the individual case, all the way down to Prithivi, or Earth, which is the support of everything. So then, in the upcoming chapters, she's going to explain how to combine these sounds into the mantras that lead to release from the material bonds and attainment of complete freedom or liberation. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.